What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. Today we're looking at the Fuji XF 10 to 24 millimeter F4 OIS. And I've had this lens for like an entire year now and I think it's time to finally make a review on it. I've been holding out because I was waiting to see what Fuji was gonna do with the 8 to 16 F2.8. But since that's not coming out till next year, Let's review this now. So this is an ultra wide zoom, 15 to 36 millimeter equivalent full frame. Has 14 elements in 10 groups, three ED elements, HTEBC coatings for ghosting and flaring. And it also has a coating on the rear element. It's a seven bladed aperture, has a constant f-stop of f4 through the entire zoom range, and it can also go up to f22. This lens has image stabilization, and if you wanna know, it is a 72 millimeter filter thread. And the last thing I wanna mention is it has a minimum close focus distance of 9.4 inches. So I have a feeling if you're watching this video, you're probably making the tough decision of whether you get this or the 16 millimeter f1.4. I reviewed that lens and I love that lens but you're probably wondering why I have this lens. And I decided to pick up this lens because of its versatility. Now, if you're in the same boat I was last year trying to figure out what to get because they're basically the same price, I just mainly wanna say that you have the option of zooming with this lens, which you don't with a 16 millimeter prime. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about this lens a little bit more. Let's take a look at some image samples. All right, so as you can tell, I've used this lens on a lot of different things. I even threw some portraits in there, but let's take a look at the sharpness test and distortions and see how this lens holds up. All right, so this is gonna be our sharpness and distortions test. Again, it's a boring brick wall, but this lets us look at distortions and also see the sharpness of the bricks. I'm from 10 millimeters F4 to 24 millimeters F4, and then all the way up to the end here where I did F22. So basically on the widest and then the most zoomed in the lens can go, Nothing in between, because that would just take too long. But first, starting out with 10 millimeters, looking at the center sharpness at F4, it looks pretty good. Going to the corners, actually looks really good for a lens like this, uh, especially you'll see as we stop it down here. So that's not too bad. Zooming in to 24 millimeters, nice to sharpen the center. And the corners actually aren't that bad either. So zoomed in at 24 millimeters, F4 is really good. You can see a little bit of vignetting here, but we'll see that go away as we stop it down. So now we're at f5.6. Nice to sharpen the center. Really good in the corners actually. 24 millimeters in the center at f5.6, really sharp. This is probably the sweet spot for this lens. This is f8 at 10 millimeters. Extremely sharp in the center. Very sharp on the outer edges especially for 10 millimeters. Zooming in to 24 millimeters, nice and sharp in the middle, very sharp on the corners, pretty much no difference. 10 millimeters at F16. Now you can kind of see it's looking a little soft here. And it's kind of about the same through the entire frame. Again, it's, it's sharp, but it doesn't look as sharp as F8 did. F22, now this is looking really soft. This actually looks softer than F4 in my opinion especially the corners. This is 24 millimeters at F22. And yeah, it just looks kind of soft. And I'll show you here comparing to F5.6. Actually, I'll show you compared to F8. So F8 to F22, you'll really see how much softer it is at F22 in the middle. So it just looks kind of hazy. Go to the corners, definitely see how much softer this is than this. So we're gonna compare F4 to F8 We've got F4 on the left, F8 on the right, and they both look pretty sharp. I think I was a little bit off from my exposure on F4, I was a little bit too bright. But looking at the corners here, it almost looks pretty much identical. Maybe a little bit more sharpness in here. This could just be contrast, but they both look really good. Literally on an ultra wide angle lens, if you can get this kind of sharpness in the center and corners at F4, that's really good. So I was really impressed with this lens, especially for it being an ultra wide zoom. Having sharp corners is something you don't usually get on something this wide. And there's a lot of lenses I've shot with that are sharp, but the edges are always kind of smeary, like the Canon 1635 2.8, 
the Nikon DX 10 to 24, which is not that bad. Uh, we have the Tokina 11 to 16. We have the Sony 10 to 18, which I actually own. This crushes all of them as far as I'm concerned. And this lens actually is incredible. Like I'm super stoked on it. That's why I have it. And some other interesting facts about it, it actually has a sealed rear element. So a lot of zoom lenses actually you'll see the element moving in and out and that can suck dust in. And this actually has a glass covering over top of that. So when the lens zooms, it's all internal, nothing extends. You can kind of see the element moving around in there, but it's all nice and tight inside there. The fit and finish is amazing. The lens is all metal, the zoom rings rubber. The aperture ring is plastic and it doesn't have hard stops or markings even, which is kind of weird. It has a optical image stabilization switch on the side and also switching from manual aperture to auto aperture. The lens does come with a lens hood, which is nice. And yeah, that's basically all the features of this lens. This version that I have, I don't know if this is common across all of these lenses, but for some reason when I'm zooming with this lens, it has kind of like a flicker. The aperture kind of flickers as it's zooming. And they actually just recently came out with a new firmware update for this lens, version 1.12, I think. And I did the update last night and that didn't fix it. So it could just be my copy. Uh, leave comments below if you own this lens and they're having the same issue, but it kind of makes it unusable for zooming and video, unless you're okay with the flickering. But uh, for me, that's kind of, kind of sucks. Anyway, you're probably wondering how fast this thing focuses and the sound of the focus motor. So let's take a look at that right now. All right guys, all in all, this lens is actually really nice. It's super versatile. I've used it on the street. I've used it for real estate jobs. I don't do a lot of landscape, but this lens is amazing for landscapes. And I even use it for portraits. Um, this is technically a 35 millimeter equivalent if you're zoomed in all the way. And in the studio, it's not that bad because you don't really need to blow the background out so you can shoot it like F6. And uh, it actually works all right if you have to use it. Anyway, this lens gets a thumbs up from me. If you want to pick one of these up, I'll put a link in the description where to get one. This video is not sponsored, but I just love Fuji stuff. And this lens is a great wide angle lens. If you're trying to figure out what you want to do, if you need the 16 millimeter, cause you get the F 1.4 and that lens is insane. Like it's probably the best Fuji lens, but I found that this lens made more sense for me. And that's why I decided to pick it up. Maybe you're in the same boat as me. So you can use my experience and maybe go with that. But otherwise, this versus the 16 millimeter, I don't know, they're both good. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. See you in the next one.